Welcome. This is Information Service Engineering, lecture number eight, Knowledge Graphs, part three. In this little excursion, which belongs to chapter 3.7 of our lecture, we are going to talk about the Wikidata Knowledge Graph. So like DBpedia, that we have already learned about in the last section of the lecture, Wikidata is another central hub of the web of data, meaning that many other information resources and knowledge graphs are using it as a reference and are linking therefore to the single items and entities within Wikidata. Okay, what is Wikidata? So Wikidata is, as you might already know, um, a collaboratively edited, let's say, knowledge base or database in that sense, operated by the Wikimedia Foundation. So it's also like Wikipedia, part of Wikimedia. And it started already in 2012, so we are nine years now, and it's growing rapidly. So like Wikipedia, almost anything that you find in Wikipedia, of course, also has a reference here in Wikidata. And in Wikidata, there is even more. So by May 2021, we have 93 million entities and data about these entities in there, among which we have more than 6.4 million persons. We have information about 1.9 million populated places, 3.1 million architectural structures, events, 4 million events, that's really a lot, 1.2 million chemical compounds, 300,000 movies, this is a lot, 4.6 million astronomical objects and 22.5 million scholarly articles, which are mentioned there with their titles, with their authors, and often also with more information. Overall, it comprises more than 1.1 billion statements. So this is really large. And there are more than 26,000 active users, meaning all of these users are actively contributing to update, to complement, and to extend the content of Wikidata. And for that, Wikidata offers you a nice user interface based on a wiki, like Wikipedia, so it's also a wiki, but this is a wiki for originally intended for structured data. So the idea was to create a database, which you can extend based on you know, a wiki interface, a wiki user interface, and what people did or what some researchers did over time, they said, hey, this is nice, this is structured data. We could also um, annotate and of course also map this data to semantic data, which means we make a knowledge base or something like a knowledge base out of it. And this is now what Wikidata has become. Okay, let me explain to you a little bit about Wikidata. Again, we have here the web page about Joseph Fourier, you know, already the physicist French, guy, mathematician and physicist, who is also responsible for perceiving and uh, thinking about uh, the greenhouse effect. So we had this in the last sections of the lecture. Okay, so again, we have a page, which means the subject of this page that you see here is Joseph Fourier. And in difference to DBpedia, the identifier used here is not a self-speaking identifier. So it's not like a name, like in DBpedia. In DBpedia, they simply adapted the name of the article referencing to Wikipedia, so that this is the same suffix. And of course, in Wikipedia, all of the articles, they are names, respecting, of course, the language for which this Wikipedia version stays. And since Wikidata doesn't have different language versions. It's only one version. So data is independent of the language. So they decided to go for, let's say, an abstract identifier, like here for Joseph Fourier Q8772. That's the identifier. Okay, then you see here lots of statements. And in the beginning, you have here a property like instance of, and then you have the value for that property human. In Wikidata, instance of means something like RDF type, but it is not RDF type. So instance of and RDF type are nowhere to be declared to be the same. That's a problem. So instance of, of course, means instance of some kind of a class, which means human here can be seen or interpreted as a class. However, since Wikidata originally was based on a wiki system, which of course had a standard um, uh, 
RDB relational database system in its back, uh, nobody cared about uh, semantic web technology. And all the, let's say, triple store and semantic web stuff has been added later on, all the RDF stuff. However, they did not change, let's say, their vocabulary. So instance of is not the same like RDF type. However, you can treat it like that and you can deal with it. But beware, we don't have the semantics there. I will come back to that later on. Most importantly, you have an identifier, so the subject of an RDF triple, you have a property and you have a value for that property, which is of course the object. Okay, there is one difference to DBpedia in Wikidata, you can give references for one of these statements and you can give several references which in the end emphasize that claim, that statement that has been made. And these references can be bibliographical references, for instance, which means you can also have, let's say, different facts about the same subject that are not necessarily contradicting because they only express the opinion of specific persons. So this is the nice thing you can do here. You can give, you can make assumptions about statements here and you can give reference for that. And likewise, you also can give further qualifiers for a specific statement. So here, for example, we have the statement that Joseph Fourier's countries of citizenship was the kingdom of France. But since the kingdom of France was changing during the lifetime of Joseph Fourier, of course, this citizenship has a start date and an end date. And of course, the kingdom of France was succeeded then by the French Republic. So therefore it has an end date. And of course the start date would be, let's say the birth date of Joseph Fourier. So you can give for a specific fact further qualifiers and they might refer, for example, uh, on time, but also on other things which can be said about a statement. Overall, what you see here, this is a list of statements which can have a reference, which can have qualifiers. So this more or less is Wikidata. All of these also obey different kind of namespaces and how to deal with the different namespaces and then to address this on different levels, like let's say on the statement level, on the object level or so on, we will see later on when we are dealing here with Wikidata and Sparkle in detail, especially when we are going for applications here. Okay, most importantly, since this original database has been mapped to a triple store and to RDF, you have also the possibility to make use of the Sparkle query service. And Sparkle, we will learn about later on here also in this lecture, you can make their query your data, the data that is in the knowledge graph there. This is a very nice interface that you see here. You have a nice editor for your queries. And as you see here, for example, keywords are in red and they are in capital letters. And uh, your URIs here are in another color, in a different color. And also here the variables, if you need them in your query, they are also in a different color. So therefore, this is nice and easy to use. To simply show you a very first and simple query. So this is a query which selects nothing else but um, all of the properties and objects or so all of the statements for Q8772, which is, as we know, Joseph Fourier. So we do this and you see here the result is a table consisting of properties and objects. And um, you see here what kind of properties and objects are here available for Joseph Fourier. However, this is only the URI. And as we already know, the URI is not a name. It's just kind of an identifier here. Or if it's not an identifier, if it's only a literal, of course you can read it, but then you can't see other things. However, let's go back again to our Sparkle query service. I have also adapted this query that we are looking for all of the labels of the properties and of the objects we are talking about. And if you do this, you see here again, the query has become a bit larger. And now you see, for example, that the place of birth of Joseph Fourier is Auxerre, that the place of death is Paris, that he was, of course, male, and uh, the country of citizenship in general was France, and here's an instance of human, and so on. So play around with it, and you can see what kind of information is there for different entities. 
Of course, this very nice query interface offers you also different kind of visualization possibilities. We will make use of that then extensively when we do Sparkle. I have here one more sophisticated Sparkle query for you. I was simply asking which living politicians are environmentalists. And let's simply try to do this query here. And the nice thing is then, so it's a huge query, so we, you will see there will be many environmentalists there among the living politicians. Everything then will be um, visualized in terms of a timeline. You might see here in the very first line of the query, default view timeline, this states that we want to see a timeline. And as you see here, um, lots of politicians with their picture, if there is a picture available and uh, yeah, of course, play around with it, adapt the query and um, have fun with it. However, as I already told you right in the beginning, we have to be a bit cautious. Wikidata is not a real, in quotes, knowledge base. Of course, you can query RDF there, but Wikidata is a wiki-based large structured database and the available triple store and Sparkle query service, they are only an add-on. So it's not fully W3C compliant in the sense that there is no W3C vocabulary used besides of RDF as label, for example, but RDF type you won't find. Our same as you won't find. Our equivalent class you won't find. You won't find definitions that anything is of type RDF class or OWL class and stuff like that. So this is not there. So therefore, reasoners cannot directly work on uh, Wikidata as such and cannot you know, uh, show their full potential in the sense that you can really do reasoning on that. However, you can use Sparkle and Sparkle is a rather powerful query language and a few of the features that are usually available for SQL, for, uh, sorry, for Sparkle and for knowledge bases can of course already be used, but it's not fully compliant. So this is one of the main issues here and you also are not able to use different kind of vocabularies and ontologies that already exist. However, Wikidata is great. It's a huge source of knowledge and uh, you can use it as a reference and it's widely used. So therefore we will also use it here in the course. Okay, now I have talked a lot about Sparkle and how to query RDF based data. So the next section of the lecture will be how to query RDF and RDFS with Sparkle.